welcome to the Moodle Moot UK and Ireland 2017, our second time here at this venue. Um, hopefully everyone has had a good morning so far and I know yesterday there was quite a bit of silence at the drinks reception, mainly to do with some sort of silent disco. Who here took part in the silent disco? Okay, that's great. Okay, it was, it was great watching you and trying to figure out what sort of music you were dancing to. I did notice some people dancing with no headphones on too, so I'm not sure what music they were dancing to either. But that's brilliant, and so thank you very much for coming along. So today we're going to have the sort of Moodle news and updates sort of state of the nation kind of presentation. But before that, I'd like to um, start off with welcoming the sponsors who are helping support this Moodle Moot up, just to give a quick word to say hello to you. So if you'd all like to come up. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Um, yeah, so my name's Nasmin. Um, I'm from Turner Inn. Um, come speak to us throughout the day and tomorrow as well. We'll be um, happy to speak to you about the Feedback Studio transition. We've also got a session at 2 o'clock today um, where one of our users will actually be taking um, you through their transition and how that went as well. So, um, yeah, please do attend. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phil Miller. I'm the general manager of Blackboard's teaching and learning business, which a big part of that is our Moodle Rooms business. Uh, we're here just to support you and, and have a chat with you guys. Uh, we'd love to have you join some of our sessions. One of the things that we're going to talk a lot about today is how to make content more accessible inside of Moodle. So that's going to be a big focus for us at this conference. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm James Bennett from Urkin and Plagiarism Detection. I thought I'd leave one in between, as you see. Um, I'm here all day as well and tomorrow with a couple of talks, uh, one today and one tomorrow as well, where I should be very happy to show the integration we have with Moodle. Uh, I think I'll leave it to that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fred Dixon. I'm the CEO of Blindside Networks and I'm a product manager of Big Blue Button, an open source web conferencing system for online learning. We've been working closely with Moodle for five years. We'll be sharing our roadmap for both the Big Blue Button project and the integration for Moodle. So come check it out. I'm Mark Abador from Leo Learning. We've been doing Moodle work for about five years or so. It's our second full year as a partner. Um, glad, glad to be back as a sponsor. There's a few of us around. Um, we're doing presentations tomorrow on XAPI, learning analytics type stuff. Um, please come and have a chat. Hello, I'm Pablo from Wiris. Uh, we came from Barcelona. We are the guys who made the mathematical plugins. Well, uh, some years from now, we, we have been doing that and hope you join us to see how easy you could create math uh, content and math questions in your Moodle. Please join us at one of our session, sessions. One is today, 11.45, 11.45, and the other one is tomorrow, same, same time. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I'm Connor Gilligan. I'm the global head of uh, Web Anywhere. Um, so we operate in, in the US as a Moodle partner in Chicago. Uh, in the UK, we're headquartered in Leeds and, um, and also outside Krakow in Poland, where we have a development center of um, 80 people now, actually, that are building Moodle products, essentially, for us. Um, just happy to help everybody today. I think it's our third year here. Um, we operate in the kind of school sector with three and a half thousand schools but also in the corporate sector so happy to help um, and discuss the projects with you guys today okay well thank you very much for that everyone and please do visit them during the coffee break and lunch break downstairs they have their stands so um we're gonna have a slight interruption now um, and we're going to be going to perth for a quick word from martin who unfortunately wasn't able to be here Audio? <coughs> hey all, that's better. How are you all? Good morning. Uh, look, I'm really, really sorry I can't be there in London this week. I really am. Uh, my travel and work just didn't allow it. Uh, I've been traveling a lot recently, uh, even more than usual. And as well as many Moodle moots around the world I've been going to, I've also been joining in with the world conversation at a number of big conferences around the world education, technology, standards, and business conferences. And one thing I've really realized in the past year or so is that the influence and potential of Moodle worldwide is even bigger than I knew. So my resolve for driving uh, the Moodle project forward is stronger than ever. 
uh, not only as a collaborative technology platform, but as a force for good and openness in this world that is increasingly being dominated by corporate interests. Uh, it's a terrible thing. Um, we're working on a number of initiatives to find uh, good funding uh, to increase our numbers of core developers. You'll be hearing about some of them shortly. Um, I just wanted to say that if you're involved with anything, any projects uh, or you've got insights into uh, things uh, where you think Moodle could be involved, where it might help you with the project, I really encourage you to uh, let us know. Um, talk to Gavin or anyone else there uh, or myself. Really sorry I can't be there. Um, we do have a large number of the Moodle HQ team there. Uh, I'm really confident that everyone's going to get good things out of the program for the next couple of days. But uh, right now, I want to hand you over to a rock of the Moodle community, our business development manager and general legend, Mr. Gavin Henrik. And I'll Thanks. see you later on. The Thanks, Martin. By the way, everyone can, uh, Martin can actually see you here, so if you'd all like to give him a little bit of a wave. <laughs> Yeah, so Martin's going to be sort of dropping in during the coffee break to spy on us downstairs, so you'll be able to go down and actually have a short one-on-one -on -one with him, either at coffee or at lunch, so please feel free to go along to the desk and chat to him, okay? <laughs> yeah, he never leaves us alone, it's okay. Thank you, Martin, bye-bye. Okay. Okay, so... Um, Obviously, we have a very busy schedule over the next two days. Um, rather than the four traditional keynotes, this year we're also doing something a little bit different. We're, so just before I get into the presentation, just wanted to explain. So this evening we have a panel where we're talking about sort of bring your own Moodle, bring your own device. Is it time to get rid of the desktop and sort of start um, developing courses for mobile first? So we have a few people sort of talking giving their opinions on that, and then we want you to be able to engage and get involved in that discussion during the panel. And then tomorrow we have a, quite a contentious one where I think I've been selected as the one who's going to be for this, although it's not the Moodle stance, which is that uh, should AI and learning analytics replace teachers? Um, and someone quote, gave me a quote yesterday that from a lecturer saying that any teacher who can be replaced by AI and learning analytics should be. Okay. Um, and then tomorrow um, afternoon, the panel will be a sort of community panel where a few of the, the various teams within Moodle will be up explaining how to engage with them on that level, be it developer, the community, the learning side, and so on. So it's something which we're trying something new and we will want your feedback, but more importantly, we want your engagement during those panels because this is a community Moodle Moot. So your participation, your presentations is what makes this excellent. Okay. So, quick thanks again to our sponsors. And also just, there's 15 Moodle partners here from around the world, ranging from Philippines, throughout Europe, um, Scandinavia, and the UK and Ireland. But we would just like to remind you that these are the UK and Ireland uh, Moodle partners, most of who are here over the few days. So, when you're thinking about doing business in Moodle and getting a Moodle service provider, do have a, a chat to them because the Moodle partners do pay a percentage of their income, which funds Moodle nearly 100%. So that's how we exist. But anyway, moving along, our mission. So Moodle hasn't really changed in what it's trying to do with regard to its mission and its vision. As Martin said, it is about empowering educators. I and mean, we've been refining this, and as we're seeing how the ecosystem in the world is changing. Um, and we're certainly hoping that you'll see this drive through what we're doing now and also in the, in the next coming years. Because it's really important that all of our team within Perth and around the world, it's about a third of Moodle HQ is based outside of Perth. We all tr strive to meet this mission and sort of keep these values and keep this vision alive. As Martin said there, it's about empowering educators, it's about doing good in the world through education. And these are our values. So these have been on our website for quite a while, and they, they haven't really changed. We've changed the wording on them a few times, and you probably are aware people often do go through a lot of different um, iterations in their values. But for us, 
this has been quite consistent. It's very much all about working in an open way. It's about being education first. It's about having integrity, about innovation. And very like where Moodle can be used in schools and in colleges for education to help this sort of risk-taking behavior from a learning point of view, an innovation point of view, we're doing the same again within how we operate. Now, Moodle doesn't exist in a void. There's a huge learning ecosystem of different apps and different systems out there. And one of the key things that we've been doing over time and are working on now is more of this integrating and working with all of these systems to understand where Moodle is. Moodle isn't trying to replace all of these, but it does exist within this, within that learning ecosystem of every single institution and organization. And this is where it comes down to for us. It's, Moodle is this platform that's a bit like the hub and sits between all of these to create that learning environment for your students and your learners. But it's not trying to replace it. And it's you know, all these courses and users and different parts that make Moodle work with all of these systems, like users could be integrating with student management system and so on. And if you look at, the, look at this, you'll see that it is very much a plug-in architecture, as you would be all aware, that you, you can integrate with lots of different other systems in this way. And that is the core of how we see Moodle and also as an organization work. We have our Moodle partners, we have the MUA, we have the Moodle community, and in some ways our community and the way we operate is mirrored within how Moodle itself operates within the whole ecosystem. But within these courses, they've got the, their own parts as well. They've got their own different plugins and activities and a se series of experiences. Because that's what learning is. It isn't just, here's a course with stuff in it. It's about experiences and sharing those experiences between the students and students. And that's where the learning is happening. It isn't really, it isn't that here's a SCORM object or here's a PDF. It's about what happens in and around that as well, just as much as um, the actual assessment that might be taking place. And as you can see here, so but Moodle is accessible from two ways. Now there's some presentations and obviously the mobile session later, we look at, well, how much is mobile and how much is access to web systems changing? There's some people here saying that 70% of their students or student access is via a mobile device. How many people here would be seeing, say, more than 50% from tablet or mobile? Are you looking? Because it is, it is actually amazing how much now is changing. And it's, that's where responsive design and so on has become very important. But actually, if you check online and the, the standard stats, both in Europe and in the US, you'll see that of tablet or um, of digital content consumption, about 90% of it is via apps rather than just through oh, the web browser on the mobile device. So it's something you have to think about. And Moodle obviously has a free mobile app which you can use and connect to Moodle. And I think in 3.3, it's like 98% complete with all of the activities. I think one of the lessons just has gone live. And as Martin said to me, Moodle, it is a true open source project. We're all here, we're all involved. It's enabling sharing and science, that experimentation in learning and in teaching. Because you can choose how you want to use all those tools that are in Moodle. Enable saving so we can focus on the bigger problems. A quote I heard from a teacher there recently was, you know, Moodle does the heavy lifting in administration so they can just get on with teaching. It, it takes in all those assignments. It also scores all those quizzes so the teacher can do other stuff, higher value learning and higher value teaching. But Moodle exists within a world, not just within the learning systems, where you have all of these other things getting involved. Accessibility. Everyone's talking about accessible content. Phil mentioned that they have some presentations on accessible and product called Ally, which actually is really revolutionary because it automatically sorts all of this stuff out for you in the background. But accessibility is important. But also then you've got 
um, the whole economics around it and the costs. Governments get involved in what they mandate. You've got stuff like REF and how it affects teaching and learning. You've got the community, you've got privacy. There's a big privacy changes in Europe, although for I think about two thirds of people here that might not matter in two years time. Um, but I, was stand, I was standing in Ireland watching the British Parliament vote away my right to live in Dublin, because I'm British, <laughs> so it's like, ooh. Um, so I'm with you on that one. But it's, uh, it's very interesting that all of these things impact Moodle as well. It's not just about technology and about learning, it's all of these things as well. And it's really important that these are dealt with. And Moodle engages with you, the community, and the partner network to make sure that these are taken into account. If on accessibility, for example, we have a new, a new plugin for a video which works really well and enables that sort of better accessible. And that's really what we're talking about there. That Moodle HQ is at the beginning curating and managing all of these requirements, but yet working within the overall community. And that's very much where the final panel will be focusing on. So we build the software. We look at Moodle Core, we look at Moodle Mobile, and Moodle Mobile really is just an alternate interface to Moodle. We, um, it provides infrastructure to the community, both our Moodle.org. How many people here are registered on Moodle.org? That's great, that's what, it's nearly 60%. The other 40% after this session, go do so. But within that, then you've also got the documentation, Moodle Docs, and you've got Mary and Helen here who help curate that, but the community creates it. You've got our Learn Moodle MOOC, which is a free online course that's around twice a year learning the basics about Moodle. You've got all our general promotion of Moodle and of its usage and also conferences like this. And all of these then, you've got being funded by partners, you've got Moodle Cloud, you've got the association, and also if you um, need a custom mobile app where it's branded and so on and customize your institution, we also have that too. And these are things that, although it's open source, people do need to engage for professional services. But you, the community, do your half of this relationship. You know? You're using it, you're integrating it, you're experimenting. And you're also giving us feedback and news, so good stories about usage or about adoption. You're supporting each other, so those on Moodle.org, how many people here have that particularly helpful Moodler badge? This is a badge where the community recognize others' contributions by ranking their posts as being useful and answers as useful, so it becomes this peer support network where recognition is the reward. I think that's really important. I think it's a an essential aspect of the community. But then you also support the existence of Moodle through working with Moodle partners. And then you have the MUA and custom brand. So it's this whole ecosystem is sort of like all working together. So Moodle Core, now, although 3.3 is about to come out, for most of you I understand you're probably going from 3.1 or 2.3.1 or 3.2, depending on whether you're going for a long-term view or not. So let's have a quick look back at 3.1, which came out just at the beginning of last summer. There were some pretty major features there. How many people have already gone to 3.1 here? Wow, okay, that's great. So they can tell you how wonderful some of these are. Um, in these, it is really, really great. So you've got this whole competency-based education. This is a company-based framework system where you can then build custom learning plans and assign them into courses and activities and have people upload prior evidence to even claim that, hey, I'm actually competent at that already from a course I did last year. And then the teacher would be able to use that as evidence. So it even works for recognition of prior learning, so RPL, which I'm not sure is very popular here in the UK, but I know across Europe, RPL has been really gaining a lot of traction. And in saying that, there's 31 countries represented in this room from around the world. The most international Moodle Moot we've had. One of the other great features was the new grader system, but behind this was a thing called UNO Cons, which also converted that Word document into a PDF so you could mark it up like this while you're grading. Now, yeah, that's a bit of a beast. I mean, 
think about it, launching Microsoft Office every time you want to open a Word document and save it as a PDF takes a bit of grunt in the servers. So it does require that. However, that's if you want that feature, you have to go ahead and deploy it. But it was, again, a great step forward. I know people have been asking for this kind of feature for quite a while. And then came 3.2. And just so you know, you're going to see Blocky around later, to t and he, he's lonely and he wants photographs. So talk to one of the Moodle HQ team who are here and go and take a Dewey. Is that what it, the, a, a double selfie's called? Or is it something else? I'm not sure. But Blocky is going to be around. So we released 3.2, and in that we had Boost, which is a new theme. And it's the first step in a new interface design for Moodle. Less blocks, more simplified navigation, cleaner interface cleaner management access. So this is the first step, and we're going to be doing massive improvements in 3.4, working in all of this usability area. We have a new media player, which I'm presenting on later, Video.js, which enables uploading subtitles and stuff directly into Moodle. You've got prettier graphs. We updated the graphing engine, LTE, LTI compliance, the messaging and notification. I know lots of people have said, hey, what about those little icons at the top of a screen, you know, with the, if I get a message, it shows up directly there. Well, that's there now. So that was help funded by one of the universities in the US. And then user tours, which is that onboarding, onboarding um, um, guide for new users on the Moodle site. And competency import and export. And lots of other stuff. I mean, it's, um, there's a lot in 3.2. And it's certainly going to be very interesting to see how people adopt these different areas. And I know Boost has had a lot of discussions going on about what the next steps in improvements are going to be. So with Boost, one of the big things was what you can see over there on the left, where you have this hamburger which just toggles off that whole left side of blocks and navigation. Because I know, especially on small screens, that nav block and admin tree took a lot of space. So that's, you can just hide that. It's gone now. So it's really a major step forward. And it might be something which you can certainly look at when you're upgrading. Um, I know some people probably stick with Bootstrap for the time being, but that is a really a huge step forward of where we are going. And do get involved in giving feedback on this and what other changes should be there, because as a community, that's how we develop these features. And this came from feedback from you. So as you can see here, that's it when it's unhidden. Um, then sort of, as we go through, so messaging and notification. So they were sort of tied up together and now they're a bit more split out. So every time you get a message, you can directly get it at the top of the page, just like you can within the mobile app. It's much more accessible. And also the messaging interface is radically improved, very much more like a Telegram kind of messaging app or um, WhatsApp. Do any of you use Telegram or anything like that for chat? OK, four. Install it, it's cool. It's what we use at HQ, and I must admit, it's something where I'd used many systems before. I started off on IRC, back when the internet was beginning. <laughs> um, but Telegram, very good. Then, of course, you've got user tours. So who here has already deployed user tours on their sites? Okay. So there's some, there's some really good stuff where you can literally have, when a teacher goes to an assignment, create assignment page for the first time, it talks them through the steps on the screen. When a student goes to the dashboard for time, it points out what the calendar is and stuff on the screen. Now, they may not need it, and they can just get rid of it. But for the ones who have deployed this, and a few institutions have, they've really seen a reduction in support queries. So again, something cool, but actually the outcome is just less work for you. And the Media Player plugin, I'll be presenting on that later. It is, it is really quite cool. although. I'm not sure my presentation is as cool as the actual technology itself, but it is great. Everyone here know what a VTT file is? You will after my presentation. <laughs> and so for graphs, so some of the Moodle graphs um, were looking a little bit old. Sort of, um, so we've introduced a new graphing library. And one of the really nice things is that where you had a graph before, underneath it now you can actually see the raw data as well. You can expand out. So you can actually look at the data behind the graph as well. So that's something, again, it's about increasing this accessibility and usability of things, even like just graphs within Moodle. And Moodle 3.3. So who here is planning in the summer to go to 3.3? 3. 
about 12, maybe 15. Okay. So Moodle 3.3 has some major, major jumps forward. So the first one is a new course overview. So Steve, where are you? Oh, you're hiding there. So Steve from um, the MUA, he'll be doing a presentation later um, about what the MUA have been doing this year. And I think Gemma, who's one of the project funder, our project um, coordinator of it, is here as well, yes? Yeah. Okay. So, pardon? Yeah. Oh, over there, hi. Um, so this is a new course overview view for Moodle. So when students go in, they can see, as you can see here, it's actually um, an assignment that they have to submit, and they can just click Add Submission directly from their dashboard. So you can see, and it's basically their task list of what's coming next. And so there's been a lot of work going on. This is a project that was initiated by the MUA, and, and that's the Moodle User Association funding. That's what it's for. However, it is something that the, come on, there we go. Um, it's something that the community then has or been thinking about this for a while, so there's a feedback from elsewhere on top of that. We also have a listing of your courses, so in progress, future, and past, if you have that concept. So it's something where if you have multiple semesters, you can look at maybe customizing this to handle your semesters, so on. I know a lot of institutions have already done stuff like this, but we're, we're putting something into core as a baseline that you can maybe then base what you have done in the past on, so it's less custom and more coherent within the overall view. And then of this, of course, every one of these UI changes gets replicated within the mobile app. So you can see there again, it's a more visual, sort of pleasant interface in that, in that respect. Actually, just that, go back to. So some of the other aspects in here as well, which I think is, is worth noting, is the integration. So who here uses 365 or G Suite at their institution? Not integrated, but just at all. So they use Gmail or use Hotmail, whatever. Okay, so about a quarter. So now from 3.3, we have a base level integration. So before there was some plugins that you'd install and it was a little bit complicated and clunky to set up maybe. Now it's gonna be there out of the box. So you'll have this more fluid workflow for people wanting to submit a Google Doc as, as an assignment, for example. So that's gonna be there and it's already up on the prototype site that you can play it or play with it and have, and, and have a look and see how it works and feels. So that's, that's really good. Another one is um, the file storage plugins and this is about if you're having a cloud environment that you can build a special file plugin. So it's, it's more technical. But the, the, the key ones there are certainly the dashboard and then the integration. Um, but as we go towards three, four, we've been doing a lot of big feature changes recently, um, and not just improvements. So what we're going to do in 3.4 is change tack. So we're gonna have one where we're really focusing on, let's polish what we've got. Okay. So there's bugs, small little feature requests around usability, around really thinking about what is, how do we, how do we improve the calendar? How do we improve that file repository system? And think about, as, as a whole, so this is where you're gonna be, become really important as always in this. Test, get involved in the tracker, contribute, Th this is an, an issue that needs addressing, give us the information behind it. We do have a usability expert now on board since last September and hopefully you, you, you'll have seen some of those, um, that impact of that different focus and development in 3.2 and 3.3. So he's also reaching out to the community asking for volunteers to get involved in improving usability. So I think there recently he, he was just doing a call for assistance on the calendar to get feedback on how people are using the calendar. So then we can look at the specification and how it's working and how people want it to work and think about how that is implemented. So you're an integral part of the designing of Moodle in this respect. So you, you really do need to make sure that you follow us on Twitter, get involved in the Moodle.org community forums, and then also and get involved in Tracker and comment on things. Some of the recent developments had hundreds of comments from people around the world. So please take part in those. And one of those areas, one of those areas is Project Inspire. So who here has heard about Project Inspire? Okay. 
wasn't there more people at my presentation <laughs> yesterday during the workshop? Maybe they, they went, I've had enough of Gavin. But, um, so Project Inspire is about learning analytics. Now, unlike the stance I'll take tomorrow, um, just so we have someone arguing for it, we're not trying to change um, teaching. As Martin said, there's two kinds of educational companies in the world, and he tweeted about it and talked about it before. There's one which is trying to help fix education by supporting the existing infrastructure, the existing teachers, and their support system. And the others are trying to fix education by replacing all of that. By going, you know, we can do this better, we can automate it, we'll have a tutor who will take them through their course without any human interaction. They'll give more accurate, more timely responses. They'll be able to track better, they'll be able to identify students at risk faster, and they'll do all of that for you, and basically replacing people with technology. And Moodle isn't about that. As a learning management system, it takes a teacher to run a course in Moodle. Yes, you could do a self-paced course, but it's designed around social constructivism, where you are engaging in discussions and reflection with students, students and teachers and students and forums, chats. And that's, and that's where Project Inspire comes in. Project Inspire is about looking at how we can use machine learning and how we can use uh, learning analytics to actually support teachers and students in that learning journey to improve their learning experience. So it's been, the idea is that we're gonna build a brain, sounds scary, but we're gonna build a brain inside Moodle. And right now we're doing the research phase where we're asking people within the community to contribute completely anonymized versions of their Moodle sites. You get to plug into anonymize it, you get to do all of that, and there's full NDAs and stuff in place as well. However, it is completely anonymized. And then we will teach that brain with machine learning to actually understand how, what a good course is, the different interactions that students have. And we already have a number of organizations and universities involved, but this is very much something which you all need to think about. Can you get involved? Is there, is there any way you can share your anonymized data with us? And the, there's full information on the Moodle.org course about this. But this is helping drive that within Moodle, then the teachers will get prompts and the students will get prompts which the institution is approved of, but based on this collective knowledge. And once you deploy that brain on that, um, within Moodle, within your own systems, then it starts continually learning just about your organization. Because every organization here is different in how they use Moodle. And part of that is why we need as many as we can contributing their data. But once it is deployed, it will learn more about you and it will keep learning and learning how your courses are best, what are the best learning outcomes for your students in the way that you teach. So please do go and have a check on this. Um, if you are thinking about learning analytics, it's of interest. If you're not, even reading through it might be something that you want to put, take part in. Okay. So Moodle Mobile. We're doing a very big focus on mobile, as you'll have noticed, and we have, in stands downstairs, we have two iPads and two iPod touches, and you'll have Juan and Bert and Garnet and others will be at the stand throughout the next few days. If you haven't tried Moodle Mobile yet, it's free, you can just go and download it. You can try it out down there, and there's a course showing quizzes and different um, activities on that, so go down and play with it on the iPad. The reason for that is, it very much is as a different interface and it's about having it on the go. This changes things in so many ways. There was a full day masterclass or workshop yesterday on mobile learning and from everything from image size through file size through being able to access things on the go. And we've done so much in the last few years. I mean, we started off and started catching up with all the different activities that were in Moodle and Juan leads the team in Barcelona. So that seems to be that tech place within Spain, um, where we've been catching up on all of these features. And it's just, I think, lesson, and what else went into 3.3, Juan? Uh, lesson, three tracks. Okay. Okay, so database, feedback, and lesson are now all available from 3.3 onwards. And even if you're on 3.2, you can use the extra plugin to get those features. But it is very much 
trying to give the students something more, more mobile in their hands because that's the way the internet has changed. It's the way people consume has changed about learning. And of all things, this is the biggest change in Moodle is really making sure every new feature we deploy, we're also doing in a mobile as well as catching up. And I think we're about 98% there on the student-based features within the mobile app now, which is amazing. And for most institutions, that's more than what they use. And so for some of these, you can see here, it has all the badges, it has standard profile. And again, you can turn these off. So someone said, you know, it's got messaging there. We don't use messaging. Within the interface on the admin side in Moodle, you can turn off what features you don't want. So it doesn't have to be so, um, everything or nothing. You can just tweak what you want in that respect. And you can also rename them as how they appear. And this is just a quick overview of whether there, you can browse, whether you can submit, and whether it's offline. Because offline is a really important thing too. So um, how many people here use SCORM objects or learning objects in their teaching, like the storyline and stuff? So there's quite a few. So that can now be played completely within the mobile app, but also can be played offline. And that was funded by a charity who wanted to be able to play these SCORM objects in a Syrian refugee camp where Wi-Fi and 3G connectivity is at a low. So you might not be out in the middle of a desert, but you might be um, in an area, or you might be on a bus where you don't want to use your data connection, or your students don't want to use the data connection, or if you're on some of the trains, if I remember the Birmingham London train, there's no connectivity on it anyway. So um, that's where the offline features are really important, and being able to go in, read the content that you've downloaded already, and even reply. You can do your four replies, and when you get back online, then it will just synchronize up again. And that's all the features. You can see there, systematically, we have been just getting rid of any of the gaps that we have in it. And we're going to continue working on that. And it is being driven by demand. So institutions are going, hey, we really want this area sorted out. And so we're, we're, hearing, we're hearing from you, we're hearing from the partners, and then Juan's team manages that roadmap of what features are going to be rolled out. But with the free mobile app, you can also make it look pretty. So where's Lewis? Is he hiding here somewhere? Huh? Okay, so that's CSS only. Using the free app, you can style it and make it look really pretty. But equally, what we mentioned earlier, you can actually get a branded app, and so that's where we publish it for you. Now, if you, you can, of course, publish it yourself, and there's some here who have done some really funky stuff with the open source mobile app. But when you do that, you then have to look after things like notification servers and publishing with your own accounts and stuff. If you can do that, that's great. If you can't, there's an alternative. And what we do is we just go through, literally, I think there's six people here, six organizations here who already have their branded app. Um, and I'll, I always look for Mark. Mark, where are you hiding? So Mark will be able to show you the loop one. So it's branded. It's called DCU Loop. Looks like their logo and so on. And it just makes it easy for the students because you don't have to add a mobile site. It's just pre-configured. Then we've got Learn MoodleNet, which is, so how many people have taken the MOOC on Learn Moodle? Okay, so in the summer, or early summer, we're gonna be doing a 3-3 um, Learn Moodle MOOC. So you can certainly just sign up for it. It's four weeks, Mary, yeah? So, and you learn all of the basic features of the current version of Moodle, and we run that twice a year in English. So it's something that you can very much just get your staff, to go in there and take that free course, and we have thousands do it every six months. Some of them keep coming back and helping out, and again, very much that community thing, being sort of co-facilitators in that respect. And engagement on it is very interesting to see that it is something where there is a lot of activity the whole way through, because people are there. And one thing I found was interesting, was about 50% of the people who, who were finishing it in, in one of the iterations actually didn't do any of the um, any of the assessments in it. They were just actually there looking through all the content and participating, but they didn't feel the need to do any of the assessment aspect. So they didn't really complete it, but they stayed the course. So you do it in your own way. Then we've got Moodle Cloud. So Moodle Cloud, with all the partners, they, they offer full services. They do hosting, support, training, integration, development, 
all of those services, and some of them offer more as well within the learning ecosystem. But we have now, I think, yeah, 20,000 active sites. Now, all of these are small, little free sites, or most of them. We've also then got some Moodle for School packages. But it is, this is about, again, empowering educators to change the world and do good. So a lot of these are maybe, um, the, the, the free ones are up to 50 people only in, in the Moodle sites. Um, but they can just go on and within a minute have that account. And so you have teachers and schools who have no funding for an LMS will go in and set up a Moodle site just for their class. It has virtually no, no space as well. It's, it, these are just really sandboxes for you to play in or if you're just one teacher to do something. And then once you grow, you can then move through these various levels. But these are all small because in the end, once you've got to a certain stage, you really do need that full service background. So for those who don't know me, um, I worked as a Moodle consultant for various Moodle partners for six years and then my own consultancy for four before I joined Moodle HQ two years ago. And it's really important that once you, that you have this incubation cycle, that people want to try it out without having too much um, sort of a skin in the game. And then once they're ready, they can then go, okay, now we need full training. We need it integrated with everything. So this is what Moodle Cloud is about, and it's why it's such an important part of our mission. And it isn't something that's suitable for long-term production for virtually any um, any site, except really small ones, which are just maybe still in the trying out phase. Um, and we are looking at how we change this. We've added a few plugins into it, and you've got, where was Fred again? Big blue button is integrated with it out of the box, but he's hiding directly in front of me. There you go, well hidden. So you can actually try it out, that out straight away. So th these are the kind of things which, again, teachers are looking for to be able to explore. And for schools, they get a, a theme out of the box, a customized version that we had produced. And of course, um, there's a sort of training course for them or an introduction course to go through. Then we've obviously got our Moodle partners, which introduced them. There is 15 um, from around the world um, here this week. Um, but of the, we do have 85 Moodle partners worldwide. And they do all these services. And um, part of my job is actually telling prospective companies, of which there's, I think, two or three soon to be Moodle partners here. I'm not going to identify them, and please don't identify yourselves. <laughs> but it's telling them why should they work with Moodle. And part of it is because they're giving us that revenue, it is to keep the Moodle project going. But it's also something where um, it's being part of this family and an official part of the family. And they give us a lot of feedback on what we're, what we're developing and making sure from working with clients like yourselves that we're doing the right thing, that we're implementing things in the right way and the right priority. So it really is all that feedback from everyone is really important. And Moodle plugins is another essential part. So how many people here have developed a Moodle plugin? Okay, so that's about well, 40. That's cool. That's more than 10%. So Moodle plugins are a, an essential part of Moodle. Quite a lot of Moodle now started off as plugins that other people had created and then eventually ended up into Moodle core. But we've been changing our interface and doing some improvements on this. Um, if, if you have been to it recently, you, you'll see that we actually now, when you're navigating it, it isn't that you are looking for necessarily a question type. You don't need to know the technical name of what you're looking for. So up in the top left, the actual first drop down now is how it's used. If you want to look for something for assessment, if you want to look for something for instruction, for collaboration or communication. And again, this is trying to refocus rather than this plugin database just being there for technical people and administrators. We're trying to make it more approachable and usable for teachers as well. Because when they go looking, there, uh, looking in there, they don't go, hey, I want to restrict access or I'm looking for a filter. They don't really know what they're looking for, but they are looking for something to help them teach. So that's what we're trying to do here is trying to help them. And so, again, if you want to provide feedback on this, please do so in the forums. This was the first iteration, so there will be more improvements on it as well. And that's the breakdown of how many different plugins in the different formats there are and what their focus is. So you can see assessment is huge. And that's one of the interesting things at Moodle. You can bend Moodle to how you want to assess, how you want to teach. And so a lot of the plugins are, hey, 
we want to have a peer assessment, or we, um, which is slightly different to workshop, or we want to have them where they upload a video and see what these integrations with assessment tools out there as well, and also ones where they're completely built within Moodle. Um, and I know that at this Moodle Emerita and at prior ones as well, various organizations have presented what they have done in those areas. So do go and have a look if you haven't. There's some really interesting ones in there. And we are blogging on Moodle.com so about some of those interesting ones. I think Mary, Helen, and some of the rest of the communication, the com community team focus on sort of sharing those on a regular basis. So please check that out. So the Moodle User Association. How many people here are members of the MUA? Okay, not enough. Um, so the MUA is one of the ways of helping impact um, what is happening in Moodle and also to help fund it. So it is a global organization, it is growing, and I won't steal Steve's thunder for later. There are different memberships. You can either be an individual member or as an organization in a university, you can be higher members as well. And basically, um, for each membership level, you get a certain amount of voting points. And what do points make? Features. So at least some people laugh, so they know, they, they know the TV reference from the 80s there. So you're all showing your age. Sorry, in a TV show, it's like, what do points make? Prizes, but in this case. So um, people within the MUA, they will propose ideas, and then they will vote on them, which ones they think that they should get Moodle to focus on. And then Moodle comes back and say, right, that'll take this amount of funding, which then is what the membership goes for. And that's, what, that's it. Just really straightforward. And then exactly how it ends up, it's Moodle, MUA, and community just finalizing and polishing things. And then it ends up in core. So we have the course overview. We have that calendar one um, coming up next. So it does take some time, but your membership is very valuable. So it's an, another way to help getting features and help funding Moodle, just the same way as working with Moodle partners and you can decide which one is more suitable for your organization. And so that's the dashboard one, um, proposed by Gemma. And um, Gemma, uh, you're presenting on that at the end of the day as well. Or, uh, so basically, after the final panel, the MUA are going to have a meeting downstairs in the Plaza Suite. And everyone is welcome. Well, you're all welcome. But you'll be standing if you all go in. So there's room in there for, I think, 80 people. So and they'll be going through those projects and how it all works and then doing some workshop stuff as well. So, so yeah? Okay, actually, if you want to just very quickly explain what you'll be doing. Yeah. You've got a catch box here. Yeah, Gemma's gonna be talking very briefly about, not so much about the proposal, the dashboard project, because you can go on to Tracker to find out about that, but um, quite a bit about the proposal process and how she engaged with the MUA and how that helped her get that project through. Because um, it's quite amazing, really. It's quite, a, it's quite a big thing that got developed, and it's quite an expensive thing to develop. And uh, you know, for, what was it, $100 Australian? That's, that's what the membership for that cost, and that's what you've ended up with. So she's gonna be talking about that, and then I'm gonna be doing a, a workshop, which I'm hoping quite a few members will be there, because I don't think, uh, th I think there's more we could do with our website and the possibility of doing things like Moodle app, uh, 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 a mobile app for the MUA. So I'll be um, doing a bit of a workshop to get some ideas about how we could improve those things. Okay. And I will be talking later on. Yeah, you will be this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is about, about the process of getting involved with the MUA and what we're planning to do to grow okay. it. So okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Steve. So and the Moodle community as well. So the Moodle community as it exists, you've got Moodle.net where you can share stuff, you've got Moodle Docs, you've got Moodle.org. Well, we're changing. We're gonna innovate, we're gonna come up with some new aspects within that Moodle community and how it all hangs together um, from looking at things like the MCCC, which is the Moodle Course Creator Certificate and how all that works and how the community can get more involved and how teachers can get more involved. Because Moodle on has content shared, it has tours shared and other things, but it's about getting more involved in, in that respect. And we're, we have a, a major project going to kick off in and around that to look at how to better work with you, the community. So again, keep your eyes peeled for that. And very much I keep saying that 
your involvement here and your ideas are what's going to make this different. So Karen, if you want to break right, and Paul, if you want to break left. So they're carrying catch boxes, you know those soft um, microphones. So you've all of these different areas in the core platform. We're open source. But what is the future? What is the future? What area should Moodle be focusing on right now? So if you'd like to speak, please put your hand up and you'll be thrown the microphone or passed the microphone. This is over to you. We, we want to hear it. This is something we're doing in all of our Moodle moves now. Um, yeah, so there was a bit of discussion yesterday at the dev session about blocks and their future. And I was just wondering if there's any opportunity from uh, an HQ point of view to clarify um, the, the future of blocks and where they're likely to be going. Because there, there was okay. a little bit of confusion, I think. Okay, well, for this part, let's talk about that at the community session tomorrow. And um, okay. this one is more about what sort of like major feature or um, functionality. But yes, no, there is confusion about blocks, especially with the way Boost came out. And so it was, um, but this is more about what features we should be looking at next. Should we be doing a more on accessibility? Should we be doing more integrations with video platforms? Or what, what's the major next steps? So there's one over here. Pa Paul? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really interesting. Moodle's got this uh, really valuable ecosystem of uh, activities for students and staff to deliver. One of the places we're always patching is how that fits in with administration and things like that. And I think there's there's a lot of work in there that can, Moodle can help with the administrative running of the teaching, not the actual teaching. And I think that's a really interesting area to look in. There's some stuff which is starting to look really good for that, but there's definitely more in that area, I think. that. Okay, so more around the admin and integrating back into the student information systems, those kind of things. Yeah, and some just making some of the process run much more elegantly than they possibly do at the minute. Okay. Next. You? Sorry. Yeah. Behind you. Karen? <coughs> yeah. Here. Oh. No. Okay. I was going to throw it to you. Oh, you. sorry. Uh, what I would like to see, for example, you want to move forward and uh, gain, uh, could say, an advantage. Would it be nice to, say, focus on the learning outcomes as a feature and uh, develop, say, something like theory, applications, innovative thinking, and then use wid uh, wizards to actually create quizzes, questionnaires, and uh, I could say assignments <coughs> that they are based on the learning outcomes. So okay. you can monitor how much of these learning outcomes have been delivered and how and then how much is actually being given back as a okay. good result from the student. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's another, uh, that, that, they're that the kind of ideas we're looking for. That's on the, actually the usability. Of course, personalization is something that everybody suffers. Okay. And it would be nice to have a, a role-based login screen. Uh, so an administrator, a teacher, and a student to see what they want. Okay, well you do have the dashboard for that, but certainly, so what we're gonna be doing is collating all of these and then starting to discuss them with the community as a whole. So next, if you got one, Paul. Hi, yeah. thanks Gavin, Brian. Uh, really love the new dashboard. The question I think is how terrible it will be. Will it support plugins? Will we be able to reorder uh, things that appear in the dashboard rather than have to rewrite it because it's gonna be uh, I think everyone will want to tailor their own version of it, but it's an amazing step forward. Yeah, and I, I think it is a step forward. As with anything, you know, when we put a new feature out there, the amount of feedback we get, then the next iteration goes again, and I believe there is already ideas about the next version of what, of what it will have, and so those are the things which will keep going, but absolutely, it's about that roadmap. Karen, your next person. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really a change. It's not really something I like to see, but uh, maybe the pace of change to, to slow a little. So rather than trying to put lots and lots and lots and lots of things in every release, concentrate on one or two things, but get them 
absolutely right, because I think with 3.1, the, the assignment and the grade mark feature, that was fantastic, really good, but there were, there were still a lot of issues with it. And I think that, I don't know whether anyone else had problems, but after rollout, you know, certainly with the Unicom thing, and the, you know, that did not work. And, uh, and that took a lot of time to sort out. And I think there's still a lot of that change to go. So I think what I'm trying to say is I think it's really good, but it, it, you know, Moodle's in that kind of marketplace now where it, it needs to be solid on yeah. the release. Um, and we have had that feedback, and that's why in 3.4 there isn't a new feature. Is it about getting it much more polished? Because that's what we want to do. I mean, we're being driven by the community to add this, add this, and more integrations or more features. And then on the other hand, we're being given that, that sort of feedback. But it is really important. So that focus, that is our primary focus for the second half of this year completely. Just usability and polishing what's there. Sorry, next, this side. Um, sorry. Thanks. Hi. Um, just uh, reflecting on that last question, um, it occurs to me possibly configuration management might be an area that could benefit from some attention as well. So we have all these features which are great and the, the pace of change is amazing. All, all the new features, um, lots of useful stuff. But being able to um, sort of manage configuration for a staging site where you're trying things out and then you've got a live site uh, where everything actually runs for real and just being able to manage that more uh, easily you know, may, maybe as simple as a ex import export for configuration settings, but okay. something along those lines. Okay, there is a plugin for that, I believe. Or yeah. Bingo. It's it's always the same. So here in the middle, um, Karen. Oh, okay. Then then you. Okay. Uh, I think um, we could probably do with a bit of commercial infrastructure for plugins. So right now, a lot of plugins are, uh, am, you know, I, in the sense that sports people are amateur and sports people are professional. You know, some of the, a lot of the plugins that we rely on are actually um, supported via partners or via people who develop them independently. Mm -hmm. But uh, institutions, I think many of them require better support and better um, certainty that the plugins can be maintained through the, the, the versions of Moodle. And so I think we need to work more to provide infrastructure for independent developers or partners even to uh, allow their plugins to be uh, professionally maintained and supported openly. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it, it is an area. I mean, it's, uh, we, do, um, we do support our partners in, in doing that, and we are aware that there are other issues at play there, which we are trying to find solutions for. But plug uncertainty is important. So, no, wait, second last one, and then otherwise, coffee is going to be a very quick coffee. Go on. Um, I'd like to think about the how to, how Moodle could integrate what the power of technology to make learning completely different and some of the ways in which technology is enabling learning um, I was interested in what you said about a kind of AI engine in Moodle, but I think that, um, you know, we've already embraced a lot the kind of visual and multimedia and interactive features that technology can do to improve learning. But I think what would be more exciting or, or maybe is an area that isn't quite yet so common to find um, is tools that learners can have to do more complex things. So I'm thinking of data, big data visualization as a kind of a tool that you can put in the hands of students so that they can find their own views of mm -hmm. a subject um, and also that we design things for Moodle that, that also kind of take on board the neuroscience of, of learning, what we're mm -hmm. finding out about what happens in the brain when we learn, and smart tools to make learning more efficient, faster, yeah. 
and, and get the, put the tools in the hands of the students to do more. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's plenty of scope for that. And so thank you for all your ideas. Actually, we'll just cut it at that. Otherwise, you won't have time for coffee. So thank you very much for your time. Um, please do chat to um, any of the Middle HQ staff if you want to. There's 10 of us here. So, um, and to obviously talk to each other. Don't be shy. This is all about sharing practice and sharing ideas. Thank you.